I hope you are all doing well and keeping a positive attitude. Everything will be good. Everything will be fine. This pandemic will go and life will become normal again. All right. So today we are going to start with the first poem of class 11. I'm going to do a photograph by Shirley Tolson with you. Shirley Tolson, I'll tell you a little about her. She is, uh, she was a poet. She was a very great author an educational journalist and an editor. She belonged to Britain and she has numerous and wonderful work done by her. And there are many uh, works that she has done only on, you know, she focused a lot on history. All right. Now this is a beautiful poem, beautiful work of her, a photograph where she recalls her dead mother. Mother has died and she recalls her mother. Mothers are wonderful people. No one can replace, can take place of a mother. And Shirley has a photograph in her hand and she recalls the time of everything she recalls, you know, connected to that photograph. So let us start. Now she has in your poem, you know, the poem you'll see that she has mentioned the photograph as a cardboard. She says I, uh, she had a cardboard in her hand. Now why cardboard? Because, you know, previously things were not so developed. Technology was not so developed and all. So they did not have those laminated things in paper, you know, all that. So they used to take photographs based on the uh, cardboard or they used to have cardboard frames. All right. And uh, so she has this cardboard in her hand and she looks at the photograph and in the photograph there is her mother when mother was 12 years of age, young, small young girl with her two cousins. Mother is there in the photograph with her mother's two cousins, uh, Dolly and Betty and both of them are holding uh, her mother's hands and uncle had clicked that photograph. All, you know, they are on a beach holiday and this photograph was taken there at the beach and uh, it was very airy and very nice, cool breeze was blowing, their hair was all over the face and all the three girls, you know, they smiled through their hair for the photograph that was being clicked by uncle. And Shirley, our poetess, she notices that her mother had such a sweet face. She notices her mother's sweet face. And then she says, and then she sees the sea behind where these three children had gone paddling with uncle. Paddling, you know, walking, enjoying at the beach, putting your water and, you know, moving your feet there. And the soul is paddling. So she, uh, she, she notices the sea where they had gone paddling and she says that the sea has changed less. And that sea was touching the feet of their terribly transient feet. Terribly transient feet she uses this phrase. This is a poetic device and it is epithet. Terribly transient feet. You know we human beings are mortal beings. We are not here for permanence. We, our lives are short-lived, temporary. We all are mortal. We all are transient. So she says that uh, the sea water is touching their terribly transient feet. You know, we all are mortal beings. We never remain the same. She was, the mother was 12 then and then she must have grown and then she became old and she died. It happens with all of us. We all are mortals. Transient life we have. But the sea is not transient. That is still the same. That is why she says the sea where they had gone paddling and was touching their feet had changed less. So here she, the poetess wants to tell us that we all have got a mortal life. Nothing is permanent. We all have to go one day. 
all right and she uses this epithet terribly transient which we'll discuss again when we discuss the poetic devices all right so she says she in the first paragraph we have just three paragraphs in this in this poem short small paragraph where she's recalling her mother and she sees the photograph her mother is the tallest and the oldest girl in the photograph and she's 12 at that time and she's holding the hands of her two little cousins uh, betty and dolly and all the three, uh, the air is blowing and their hair, their hair are all on their face. And the uncle, when he clicks the photograph, they all smile for the photograph through their hairs, through their hair. All right. And uh, then she talks about the uh, terror. She talks that the sea has not changed, but her mother has left. Her mother is not alive now and because... Uh, the sea was touching their terribly transient feet, transient, short-lived. All right. Then she's in the second paragraph. She recalls her mother. After 20, 30 years, you know, the mother saw the photograph. Uh, she must have found in her home. And she, when she looks at the photograph, she laughs. A very nice laugh because her, the beach holiday was a very favorite past memory of the mother. So then after 20, 30 years, she finds the photographs. She looks at the photographs and she says how they had dressed the three children for the beach holiday. She looks at the dresses and she laughs how they had dressed. They, obviously the parents, they had dressed, they had planned this beach holiday for these children and they had dressed and dressed them so for the beach. And the mother looks at the photograph and she laughs a nice laugh. It was really, you know, a good memory of hers, a favorite memory of hers. And the poetess remembers her mother's laughter, her mother's face when she was laughing, looking at the photograph. Her mother's favorite past memory was when she had gone to the beach holiday. So when she looks at the photograph, she remembers the holiday. But our poetess remembers her mother's laughter. When she looks at her mother laughing, looking at the photograph, both of them were struggling to cope up with the loss. Her mother's loss was that time, the beach holiday that has gone and will never come back because she's grown up now. And uh, for Apoetus, the loss was that her mother's mother was no more. She had died. And her laughter, the beautiful laugh, her mother, uh, her mother's face had got that she remembers a lot. She recalls a lot. So the poetess uses the phrase as uh, labored ease of loss. You know, labored is a struggle, a hard work, ease of loss. So easily things had gone. So she says that we both were, the mother was struggling to come out of she was not feeling nostalgic you know when you remember your old things old pastimes you feel nostalgic you feel nice also you feel a little sad also because it's gone and in the same way uh, the poetess was feeling nostalgic at the loss of her mother as she remembered that time when the mother was looking at the photograph and laughing then moving on to the third paragraph she says that now it's been the same number of years as the mother was in the photograph that her mother has gone. That is, her mother was 12 in the photograph and now it's been 12 years now that my mother so, uh, has uh, expired. So that means her mother has, has died and it's been 12 years that she has gone. Alright, and she says that now after her mother's death, she has nothing to say. She's in great pain, she's grief stricken. Loss of a mother is a great thing. It's so difficult for anyone who loses a mother. And she says that her death has left her speechless. And she uses a phrase there at the end. It's silence. Silences. You know when we are alive, we are active, we are energetic, we are lively, full of life. But when death comes, everything becomes silence, silent. Because death itself is silence. And 
that her mother's death has left her speechless, has left silence all around. She has no words to say. This is the poem. She misses her mother a lot. And the poet just wants to say that a mother's loss is a great loss. Leaves everyone speechless. We don't have words to say if we lose our mother. And that the life of human beings is transient. We all are mortal beings. The time, the day we are born, we are, it is sure that we will die one day. Death is a necessity. Our lives are temporary, short-lived, transient. All right. So this was the poem, small short poem where uh, Shirley remembers her, recalls her mother. Quickly we will go through the important points. I told you she has mentioned cardboard. Cardboard is referred to the photograph. Uh, it is quite possible it was the cardboard frame of photograph or the photograph was being had been stuck on a cardboard. All right. So uh, that was something important you should know. And then we'll quickly go through the three stanzas and what was there in the stanza. In the first stanza, she says it depicts her mother's childhood days when the mother was 12 and they had gone for a beach holiday. Uh, and she had gone with her two cousins, Dolly and Betty. All right. And these two cousins were smaller. Her mother was the tallest and the oldest. And amongst three, and uncle had clicked their photograph. It, it was breezy, it was airy. And they had all uh, on their face, they had their hair. And they had smiled through their hair. Uh, for the photograph that was being clicked by uncle. And then she mentions about the sea. The sea being uh, immortal, eternal, never ending, never dying. But that sea that had changed less because it is uh, immortal. So touched the feet, was touching the feet of these children who had gone paddling. And uh, touched their uh, terribly transient feet. That means uh, the feet that were mortal, that were short lived. Uh, things never remain same with humans. We have to grow up and we have to die one day. So that uh, the poet wants to bring out in the first paragraph. Second paragraph, she talks about her childhood days. See, in the first paragraph, the mother was only 12. So obvious, it's obvious that the poet was not born at that time. But after 20, 30 years, when the mother has found that photograph again, and she is looking at the photograph and she is laughing a nice laugh, remembering her beach holiday and how the parents had dressed uh, them up for the, uh, for the beach holiday and the photograph that was being clicked. And the mother had a nice laugh and the poet remembers her mother's laugh. The mother was remembering, feeling nostalgic of the uh, beach holiday that had gone, uh, was now a memory. And now this poet just was feeling nostalgic about the mother's laughter because mother is now no more. And she remembers her mother's smiling face, laughing face when she looks at the photograph and remembers a beach holiday. Alright, so she talks about that and she also says that both of them, the mother was struggling to cope up with the loss of the uh, memory of the beach holiday and she was uh, struggling to cope up with the uh, memory of that time when the mother was looking at the photograph and her uh, mother had a nice laugh on her face. She was smiling and laughing. So she remembers her mother's face. Alright, and in the third paragraph she says that the mother has died now and it's been 12 years as many years as she was when the photograph was clicked, so that is 12 years. And the poet is in great pain now. She is grief stricken. She is very sad because she has lost her mother. And her mother's death, which itself is a silence, has silenced her, has uh, made her speechless and she has nothing more to say. So this was the uh, poem and the three stanzas in it. Quickly, we'll see that the poet has used these three phrases. You know, the poem, uh, when you read, go through your books, read it, everything is very nice, simple, easy. But these three phrases have got a lot of things to say. So, uh, in the first one, she says, terribly transient feet. She says so because she wants to bring, Shirley has used this, she wants to bring the point that we all are mortals, human beings are mortal. Nothing remains the same for us. Our lives are short-lived, temporary. We have to go one day. All right, but the seed that touched their feet is has changed less, and it remains the same because it's immortal, it's eternal, never ending, never dying. 
all right then she says labored ease of loss she has used this a uh, poetic device we'll do the poetic device also she has used this poetic device this is oxymoron where a poet uses two contradictory words together all right labored is hard work ease is something easy so there are two contradictory words and this she used when she wanted to say that both of them were feeling very sad feeling very uh, you know it's ironic that both of them were struggling to cope up with the loss that they had uh, had uh, the memories that had already gone and now they are only memories so the mother was struggling to cope up with the memories of the past her favorite memory was beach holiday and the photograph that was clicked and her memory the poetess's memory was her when her mother was looking at the photograph and laughing all right then she says it's silence silences in the last paragraph last line it's silence it's is used for death it's silence death is itself silence brings silence brings vacuum everything becomes quiet and has silenced her had made her speechless all right so this is the important thing that is there in the poem and next important thing that is there is the poetic devices now let us see quickly the poetic devices she has used three poetic devices here one is alliteration oxymoron and the third is epithet what is alliteration alliteration is use of consonants you know when you are writing a poem you have to follow a rhythm and a proper tone there should be there so sometimes the poets they use alliterations uh, alliterations are what when the uh, they use words with starting with the same consonant together in the same line now what is a consonant see we have alphabets we have 26 Uh, alphabets a b c d till z so we have five that are vowels and 21 are consonants all right so consonants all right so when in the poem she uses this see in the same line she has used stood still together you know s s consonant s s is used she has used deliberately she has used these words starting with the same consonant all right to bring a rhythm uh, a certain tone in the uh, her lines so stood still she has used these are the lines when they stood still for getting the photograph clicked so ss is alliteration here second one she has used is through there and when they had laughed through their hair you know all the hair was on their face so uh, for the photograph that was being clicked so she has used this tt together then is my mother's so when she looks at her mother's face and she has used that line my mother's sweet face she notices that her mother's got a sweet face so my and m are consonants which are being used in the same line together then terribly transient i told you she has used this tt and silent silences i have already mentioned it ss so these are the alliterations where the consonants are used in the same line together they you the poets use deliberately to, uh, some words which start with the same consonant then is oxymoron oxymoron is a poetic device where two contradictory words are used together in the same line see here she says labor is of flaws the words that she uses the phrases that she uses labor is you know hard work hard you know labor when you work and ease is something very easy so she has used two contradictory words and this is oxymoron and the last that she has used is epithet epithet is when you describe something in a very exaggerated way she could have you know she has used this terribly transient she could have said my mother's transient feet no but she used this word terribly you know she wanted to emphasize she wanted to give exaggeration she wanted to give a certain you know uh, she wanted to bring out this point that our lives are uh transient and temporary and short lived so she used terribly with it so when you use exaggeration to describe something that is epithet all right so this was the poem a very simple one beautiful poem when she recalls her mother and uh, go through the poem any problem you come through you can definitely mention in the comment section i have even mentioned my gmail id there if you want you can put up your questions there i'll definitely answer and yes if you have still not subscribed my channel please press the subscribe button along with the bell to get the latest notifications do take good care of yourself see you bye bye